Jesse Waters is still on that revisionist uh, history running interference for Ron DeSantis's education initiative in Florida. And the reason why I think they're so uh, dug in on this point is because it is extremely revealing as to what the agenda really is about when they uh, attacked critical race theory supposedly, or anything that made, you know, uh, any 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 uh, white people, you know, upset about the fact that um, we had slaves in this country and not just that we had chattel slavery, but that it really by any real metric, it is it was literally the foundation of building America into the um, economic power that it became um i mean it, it it really is an uncontroversial statement and it wasn't just the the south that was built on slavery it was the entire the wealth of the country um and apparently this is too dangerous of a concept to introduce to um to you know students essentially. And the latest curriculum, which makes a point of insisting that teachers uh, teach that enslaved people develop skills that um, were to their personal benefit during slavery. Um, this they must try and, um, you know, prove this in some way. It's an unprovable point because it's irrelevant <laughs> it is so not the story <laughs> of like you know it's like literally it, it's like talking about the titanic and saying you know um some of the dinghies uh i i i, I can't even like you know like the, one of the, the the amazing things they found out that there are certain types of deck chairs that float so wow. there was some good that came That's out this is a scientific Something achievement like um, and a movie that came out of it, too. Don't forget about that. Jesse Waters spoke with William Allen. He's one of the authors of the curriculum. Um, he is apparently uh, a political scientist, not a, a historian, but again, irrelevant. Uh, here he is. Um, here is uh, Allen trying to um, uh, make his case. Now, one of the authors of the Florida curriculum, Dr. William Allen, joins me now. So, Dr. Allen, why do you think Kamala Harris is being dishonest about what's being taught about slavery? Permit me not to give you Kamala Harris's motives. They are invisible. I don't know them. We can all have suspicions that there's a dishonest purpose afoot. But what's more important than that dishonest purpose is the truth. And this curriculum is devoted to telling the truth, whereas Kamala Harris has retailed a lie. Now, it may only have been a falsehood the first time she stated it, but when you repeat a falsehood, it becomes a lie. Tell her right now what specifically this component of the slavery course teaches. Well, permit me to have Frederick Douglass tell her. He wrote an autobiography in which he described how the mistress of his slave owner began to teach him to read. She pulled back the curtain through which a glimmer of light shone before the master forced her to close it. But that glimmer of light was enough for Frederick Douglass to illumine a bright flame that he exploited to his benefit and his country's benefit thereafter. Such examples are numerous and they are retailed in the stories of people who suffered the indignity of slavery time and again. And quickly to permit me to say, what this curriculum is about is having people who live the experience, who live the history, tell their stories. And nothing is more important than that we never, ever erase the stories that the people who live the stories tell. All right. So, um, first off, again, let's just even take what this guy's saying and you you notice like the flowery language that he needs to, to sort of like obscure <laughs> you know, he needs the, the the flame the passion blah 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 the implication is that um that douglas would not have learned to read were he not a slave <laughs> but the reality is it's the opposite 
Yes. That there not only would uh, Frederick Douglass not have to rely on the mistress of the master uh, to uh, make him see the concept of reading, start this light. And we're going to examine the, even that question. But just even if we were to stipulate that she was to sit down with him for years and taught him to read and taught him grammar and taught him all these things. Well, there's every reason to believe that if Douglas was not a slave, um, he would have had an opportunity hmm. to read. It wouldn't have been disallowed. In fact, there would be more than uh, Frederick Douglass. There would be many Frederick Douglasses who would have learned to read, but for slavery. So the real question isn't like, you know, whether slavery added, uh, you know, uh, allowed for skills that uh, benefited them. The real question is, but for slavery, would these people have had skills? And the answer is undoubtedly no. No, no, no. There's not a but for slavery. No, the it is but for slavery there would be a lot more yes. people with skills the fact that the uh, skills I mean, were honed in is not because of slavery it is in spite of exactly, slavery exactly exactly I mean, this guy was a uh, reagan appointee as the chair of the united states commission on civil rights uh, 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 <laughs> just a heads i mean because i i couldn't find too much about him so i just went to good old wikipedia and there you go uh, appointed um, by Reagan and then Bush the first. This uh, Twitter, um, a Twitterer, who is um, uh, Ito, I, I can't pronounce uh, their name, uh, but they are a Texas A&M statistics PhD student. Um, and uh, we'll, pop, we'll pop it up. Um, the uh, And they... Um, they did a, uh, a, a, a tweet thread on William Douglas, the way that he presents it within the context of his um, uh, biography. And you can scroll down here. Um, we're not going to go through the whole thing. But bottom line is, yes, his mistress, who he says had no experience in slavery uh, before she married uh, his master. Um, and... Uh, therefore, was open to the idea of introducing to him literally the alphabet. And then uh, not only did she stop uh, teaching him when her master, her husband said, stop doing that. Uh, this is Mr. And Mrs. Ald. Um, he, she assisted me in learning to spell three or four were uh, three or four letters, words of three or four letters like dog, um, maybe a cat. Um, and then once she was forbade from doing it, you can scroll down to where he gets into the uh, capital A's. Um, it was in fact, not those letters that she taught him, but rather it was um, when the master said, don't said this, what was going on at once forbade Mrs. Ald to instruct me further, telling her, among other things, that it was unlawful as well as unsafe to teach a slave to read, to use his own words. Further, he said, if you give an N-word an inch, he will take an L. An N-word should know nothing but to obey his master, to do as he is told to do. Learning would spoil the best N-word in the world. Now, said he, if you teach that N-word, speaking of myself, that being Douglas, how to read, there would be no keeping him. It would forever unfit him to be a slave. Mm. He would at once become unmanageable and of no value to his master. As to himself, it could do him no good, but a great deal of harm. It would make him discontented and unhappy. And then Douglas goes on to write, these words sank deep into my heart. These words, remember that, these words sank deep into my heart, stirred up sentiments within that lay slumbering and called into existence an entirely new train of thought. It was a new and special revelation explaining dark and mysterious things with which my youthful understanding had struggled, but struggled in vain. I now understood what had been to me a most perplexing difficulty to wit, the white man's power to enslave the black man. 
It was a grand achievement, and I prized it highly. From that moment, I understood the pathway from slavery to freedom. It was just what I wanted, and I got it at a time when I least expected it. While I was saddened by the thought of losing the aid of my kind mistress, I was gladdened by the invaluable instruction which, by the merest accident, I had gained from my master. In other words, the true inspiration for him to read came from not the alphabet that he was taught by his mistress, not the uh, three-letter words that he was taught, but by the understanding that it was the master preventing him from reading, which was uh, keeping him mentally and physically enslaved. And then he went on to, to learn to read in secret because had he not had that revelation, his use of three letter uh, words or the alphabet would probably have just been uh, of, of some minor utility to her or to him in his uh, enslaved duties. It completely misses the point of what was going on in this curriculum. And purposefully, Sam. Obviously. And purposefully. And purposefully. And on top of which, that same uh, Twitterer has another thread. I don't know if I sent that to you, Bradley, where they go by, um, they provide names uh, of, of slaves that have supposedly gone on to um here here's that thread gone on to prove their point about the personal benefit and and again i i think this is sort of secondary insofar as like the real issue is not so much that um this is you know whether uh these people got uh, skills uh but rather the question of whether it was because of or in spite of slavery. And they name in their release um, Ned Cobb, Henry Blair, Louis Latimer, John Henry, shoemakers like jo uh, James Horton, uh, Paul Coffey, uh, Betty Washington Lewis. They go on to name names of enslaved people, presumably, who picked up skills that became uh, important to them, uh, you know, a hell, uh, of personal benefit to them later. And then scroll down. This uh, Twitterer goes through all the names. Ned Cobb uh, was a tenant farmer and activist born in 1885, 20 years after the emancipation of slaves. Oh, the second name is Henry Blair, also listed as a blacksmith. There's no evidence Henry Blair was ever enslaved. In fact, he could register patents as evidence he was not, in fact, ever enslaved. Third is Lewis Latimer, listed as blacksmith. Lewis's parents escaped slavery, obtained their freedom in Massachusetts, and eventually Lewis was born a free man in free Massachusetts. Fourth name is John Henry, also listed as a blacksmith. Uh, details about Henry are disputed, and his status is principally a folk hero. The fifth name is James Fortin, listed as a shoemaker. James was a freeborn African American and sailmaker, not a shoemaker. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's more examples, but the the point is, like, even in their own defense, like, where are they getting this information? It's just cut and pasted from some heritage, uh, you know, uh, propaganda paper. Well, I mean, there, this is the same um, state that is considering uh, allowing for teachers to use PragerU videos uh, in their education of classrooms, which is not an accredited university. It just uses that for, like, branding purposes. It, it, I mean, it's amazing how uh, uh, how much they project on to like the left in terms of indoctrination through education, because this is what you this is definitionally that it's unbelievable. And um, and kudos. It's Alexander sex critical um, E.T.O. T.H.E.I.P.I.E. -E. I, in a million years, I could never pronounce that. Um, E.T.O. Thea Thea Pi. I don't know. <laughs> but like uh, people should follow, uh, yeah. uh, give that uh, person a follow. They did uh, and spread that tweet around. It's really um, uh, important. It's important. 